In the future, aging will no longer be invisible. It will be trackable, slowable, and maybe even reversible. And so in this video, I'm gonna be exploring exciting new longevity technologies that are very plausible in the next 10 years. And now with people aging at close to, or even half the rate of a normal human, for example, Brian Johnson, the future becomes a whole lot more interesting. And yes, you might be saying, well, Brian, he's 47 years old. He doesn't look that great for his age. And you've got to remember, it's been over 40 years of poor lifestyle choices for him. So things like deep wrinkles, they're essentially scars in your skin. So, and I mentioned about reversing skin aging, that's a, it's a very difficult thing to do. And yes, anti-aging therapies do tend to be expensive. That's why I think the closest parallel we have in movie terms would be in time where time and currency overlap. And I think in the future, there may be a, a little bit of polarizing between people with money and people without. Of course, there will be a trickle down effect, but it will take some time because technology is just moving so fast now. But extending both lifespan and health span doesn't always have to be super expensive. I've seen people who've spent just 50 pounds a month and had big drops in their pace of aging. So moving back onto reversing age, so epigenetic reprogramming or partial reprogramming to be precise. I say this is one of the most exciting things in development. Rejuvenate Bio back in 2022 managed to extend mice lifespan by 9%. And this is using Yamanaka factors, KLF4, OCT4 and SOX2. And these mice, they had better muscle regeneration as well as uh, improved uh, metabolic health. It crosses over into disease models too. In a progea mouse model, they extended mice lifespan by 30% with reduced organ fibrosis and DNA damage. And you may well have heard of Sinclair Lab with Harvard. They uh, managed to do a partial reprogramming on the optic nerve of uh, mice eyes and reverse blindness. So, and that's blindness. So if we're talking about just reversing macular degeneration, I think this is not too far-fetched in the future for humans. On top of this, there's other mice studies doing partial reprogramming, showing epigenetic age reversal in muscle, kidneys, and even skin. So back onto Brian Johnson. So in the future, it might actually be possible to reverse the, that long standing skin damage. And it crosses over not even just into self-preservation, but epigenetic reprogramming in mice with uh, autistic spectrum symptoms. They've actually managed to uh, be able to subdue those symptoms. Another intervention that's in development is uh, mRNA therapeutics. There was a study with mice where they gave them TERT, so telomerase, reverse transcriptase, mRNA. And they were managed to uh, extend these mice lifespan by 20%. They did have uh, underlying conditions, but that is promising. And some people do have short telomere lengths and it can, it can be associated with various different kinds of cancers, all kinds of things. In addition to this, there's been other examples with mice using transient mRNA delivery for longevity genes like Clotho and FOXO3. And if you don't know, RNA is encoded for by DNA. And these, um, this, this therapy was shown to improve heart health, liver and brain in particular. We've also got gene therapy in development using adeno-associated virus vectors as a delivery method. So again, looking at telomerase activation and in mice, this is in wild mice this time, not disease ridden mice and they managed to extend lifespan between 13 and 24% by extending telomeres. And clotho gene therapy in mice managed to reverse arterial stiffness as well as cognitive decline. So it's gonna make it a very exciting treatment in the future, but yes, very expensive. And so I will be getting on to shortly diagnostics because there is a lot of diagnostics even now that uh, is just, it really does make a difference. And so that prevention is more powerful than cure. So by avoiding having to do some of these expensive treatments, by doing what you can to prevent now, you're gonna save yourself a lot of money in the future. Check out our 12 month rejuvenation program where every three months we look at 225 different biomarkers and get your future vitality optimized. There's even a six month break clause if your situation was to change. One that I think in the future will have some mass market appeal is engineered gut microbes. So a study with C. elegans, they managed to extend lifespan by staggering 45% by um, using this engineered microbe for urolithin A. So obviously improving mitochondrial function and it even crossed over into rodent studies, improving muscle health. You've got another one for an engineered form of E. coli for producing butyrate, reduced inflammation in aged mice. And then um, there's other engineered microbes for improving gut brain access, immune function, even skin barrier strength. So a lot of applications here. There's even mitochondrial transfer in the pipeline. 
a study with infarcted pigs. They injected young mitochondria into the heart and improved contractility. Therapeutic plasma exchange is current, but it's very expensive, $10,000, that kind of region. And I believe this is gonna get cheaper with automation as well as memetics for these formulations that are used, you know, albumin. Then you've got smart analytics. Obviously there are ones available already, but there's new ones in development that have better specificity like Unity Technology is a developing one that seems to improve joint health. So it helps with arthritic patients clearing out those senescent cells. Moving on to diagnostics, the future is kind of here already. You know, you can calculate your pace of aging as well as identify strong causes of why you're aging. But it is a little bit clunky, you know, having to provide a blood spot card, send it off and wait two, three weeks for results. I think in the future, you're going to have something similar to, you know, CGM, continu continuous glucose monitoring, but doing a monitoring for epigenetic aging. It's having the precision there to be able to pick up that change of rate of aging. At the present, you know, it can, it can be detected even within a week of like methylation patterns, but it's something using like the Danundin pace. It, uh, there is a 4% tolerance in there. So that's why people generally do it, like they say like eight weeks of positive changes. Some people like Brian Johnson even do it monthly. And touching on the reasons why you're aging, there's so many actionable data points by following epigenetic biomarker proxies that there's even technology now you could even be able to tailor supplements like a formulation from these biomarker proxies. Obviously it's already happening with blood with companies like Bionic, but it's a little bit clunky because to actionable data points because it only reads a few vitamins, it doesn't have any antioxidants unlike with epigenetics. And then uh, I think in the future, so that I think using blood spot cards will remain the norm for quite some time for doing a wide array of epigenetics, but doing a rate of age, aging, I think that will, be able to be transmitted potentially over the cloud using some kind of continuous monitor or just requiring say just one drop of blood like with a glucose test doing that one maybe every day of the week just to see small pattern changes in that rate of aging and who knows there might be advancements in biomarker proxies for sweat and saliva so that'd be an even easier way of just providing a sample and having it transmitted to the cloud but yeah, I'm very pro detecting real-time epigenetic aging because then it can pick up if you start a new supplement, is it really working or not? And then there's all kinds of advancements in say like um, breath as well, vocal tone. Voice monitoring is also on the horizon. A couple of companies are using that because obviously breakdown in collagen in those vocal cords, that is a biomarker of aging. And then on that area, Excel breath compounds, I think that'll be another area of focus used for things like NAD status, ketones, even advanced glycation end products. I mean, it's also being used now for uh, blueprint of your breath analysis for um, things like liver disease and certain cancers. One final area I think may come to the forefront is an AI powered digital longevity twin. So uploading data from say your whoop, which is getting even more advanced now, these wearables, then you've got gen genomics, then epigenetics, gut microbiome data, if that's all collated into one area, then that digital twin, you could actually do experiments on that. So it might give you interventions and you run an AI model on that intervention and see the percentage chance that you, if, if it thinks it will actually reverse your biological age or slow down aging at least. So if you like that video, then check out this one on VO2 Max and its links to longevity, as well as accessible ways of monitoring it. And then a few bonus biomarkers that also have strong correlations with longevity. Thanks for watching. See you next time.